So in order for us to duplicate a rectangle in perspective, we first need to understand how to do it when we're looking at it straight on in an orthographic view. We can find the center of the rectangle we've just created by drawing a line from opposite corners. The point at which both lines intersect is the center. Now in order for me to duplicate a rectangle of the same size next to it, I'm extending the horizontal lines from the top and bottom a little bit past where I think the next rectangular prism will be. In order to find where the next vertical line is going to be placed, I draw a line from the top left corner that intersects the center of the right line. Where this new line meets the horizontal is where we're going to place our vertical. We can do the same thing in one point perspective. I'm going to start by creating a plane below the horizon line. Now that we have this plane, we can duplicate it back in perspective by doing the same thing. We draw two lines from corner to corner to find our center of our plane, extend that center line back to the vanishing point, and then draw a line that emerges from the closest corner and intersects the center of the further line. We've now created a new rectangle that is actually the same size, but is further away in perspective. If we want to repeat the process, all we need to do is draw a line from the corner that intersects the center line we've already found. Now I'm going to mirror a rectangular plane in two-point perspective. As you get more comfortable doing this, you can estimate the convergence of the lines the way that I'm doing here. But if you're still unfamiliar with perspective, you might want to draw the vanishing points on the page. This dotted line will represent the plane that I'm going to be mirroring the rectangle across. Again, I'm finding the center of the rectangle by drawing two lines that connect opposing corners. I extend the lengths of this rectangle beyond the plane of the mirror. Again, drawing a line that emerges from the corner and intersects that center point will allow me to find where my width lines will be. I'm going to do the same thing, except now I'm going to mirror the rectangle vertically. This second rectangle will represent the mirror that we're going to be duplicating across. I'm extending the verticals that are emerging from the corners until they meet with the mirror that I've just created. Now we're just going to do the same thing again. Draw a line from corner to corner to find the center. Extend that center line. Now create a line from the corner that intersects the mirror plane. Where it meets with the dotted vertical line is where our mirrored rectangle should be placed. I extend these lines back towards the right vanishing point until they intersect with the verticals. This is going to be the hardest technique in the entire tutorial. I start by establishing our ground plane and adding some vertical lines. I create a curve that's going to act as our center line. Imagine as though we've taken a cross section or a slice through something. With our center line established, I create lines heading towards the left vanishing point. I establish the width of the curve by now creating a second line towards that right vanishing point. Now I'm creating verticals that will show where the center line is in relation to the ground plane. I extend the center line out towards the established width. 
Although I kind of messed up the perspective here just a little bit. These dotted lines that I'm making are representing a cross section that's perpendicular to the center line we've already established. These cross sections will help us create an identical curve that's away from the center line. Now I'm doing the same thing again, just at another point on the center line. And one more time. We'll do the final cross section here at the vertical that we established in the beginning. Now, by connecting all these vertices, we've duplicated that curve. Using our rectangle duplication methods from earlier, we can mirror these cross sections and create another identical curve further away in perspective. In mirroring over that cross section, I've now figured out the width on the other side. I'm expanding out from the center line until I meet the further width. And there I create another vertical. Now that all my cross sections are done in this side, I connect them with a single curve. I'm adding a little extra line weight to emphasize the entirety of the silhouette. And that's it for part two guys. Try these techniques out for yourself until you feel comfortable with them. And if you like the video, please subscribe, and maybe check out some of the other videos on the channel. I'll be putting up new tutorials every week, so be sure to check back. Thanks guys!